So, let us get started with the foundations of multi rate systems, multi rate signal processing. So, the motivation towards this uh, area is in two main uh, problems coming from engineering practice. One is sampling rate converters and the other is in oversampled systems. So, let me brief you with a motivation towards uh, multi rate signal processing. Now, the foundations to multi rate signal processing is basically you are sampling uh, the standard Nyquist sampling theory right. So, the question way back in the 1960s, 1970s when people in Bell Labs were developing systems uh, were as follows. For example, in those days the digital audio required various sampling rate um, um, options. For example, if you think about the studio work that required a sampling of 48 kilohertz for, uh, for audio. If you were to think of the digital tape slash CDs then they required a sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz and if you thought about broadcasting applications that required say 32 kilohertz. The question is how can I go from an analog signal and cater to three different systems that are working at different sampling rates right. So, how can I cater to a digital system working at different sampling rates with the same analog same analog signal it is the same continuous time signal but it is working at different sampling rates now a naive solution one can think about is well i have digital i'll convert again digital to analog i do the sampling again right i have these d to a to d converters at every point uh, in in the in the configuration and therefore i i i work with these systems right i i a, a naive solution is use ADCs and DACs at every um, point where a conversion is needed. But there is also a cost you cannot buy these ADCs uh, <coughs> very cheaply it is not possible to buy them right. So, that is prohibitive if you have various systems which require different sampling rates I have you know I cannot use ADCs and DACs uh, at every point in the system. So, therefore, we need to do something clever basically we manipulate digitally somehow that we can go from one sampling rate to the other sampling rate that is I can convert my sampling rate seamlessly from one rate to the other 
still preserving all the properties of the underlying original signal that I have and then work with the rest of the system right. So, that is the solution, but how to go about doing that. So, that led to the birth of this theory uh, into multi rate signal processing and a lot of work has been done from uh, the pioneering works of uh, folks at Bell Labs, Ron Crozier, Bellanger and, and many of these people who were there at that time um, and, and, and then you know this has led into a lot of applications uh, from compression to you know high decimation filter design to trans multiplexers and so on and so forth. The applications are tremendous and today I think this is something basic. So, it is almost like uh, 40, 50 years, but I think it is basic. Now, with this motivation in mind, let us see what are the basic operations in multi rate signal processing. So, when we say multi rate we mean that we are changing the sampling rate. So, that idea, idea is, is clear. Now, if you think about what possible operations are there, the first operation is decimation which means I am down sampling or I am reducing the sampling rate right. We can assume it is an integer level of decimation right because anything which is a fraction we can always realize as some combinations of increase and decrease of the sampling rate right. If you think about decimation pure decimation let us think about integer decimation that means I am reducing the sampling rate by say rate half or one third one fourth some number some integer decimation. Then we have this expansion which is we are up sampling or we are increasing the sampling rate by again an integer amount ok. Now, if I want to get a rate of say 1.5 conversion 1.5 is 3 upon 2 right. That means, I can re reduce the rate by half and increase the rate by 3 I mean, I mean decimate by 2 and you know expand by 3 and that might give me the rate that I need. Right. So, again let us go back to our motivation to the studio work at 48 kilohertz and then which required uh, for the CDs at 44.1 kilohertz. The rate conversion is right 44.1 upon 48 or if you want to go from other, other side you can say 48 upon 44.1 whichever is the way you want to go about. Right. So, the goal is I do not want to use ADCs in the middle directly using the samples that I have in whichever sampling rate I started off with I want to proceed to convert seamlessly from one domain to the other domain. Now, let us go a little deeper with this idea in mind and we will say what is this M fold decimator. So, an M fold decimator takes x of n which is my discrete set of samples as its input down samples by a rate m and I get my decimated output which is y d of n and this is also called a compressor. y d of n is basically x of m times n. So, this is the relationship. So, let us see how this this works. 
right. So, let us say I have samples. One, say two, this is say one, say this is point five. And let us assume that this is a time step zero, time step one, time step two, time step three. And if I want to get this through a decimator with m equals 2 that means, I am slashing my rate by half right. What I get is, so just look at this equation that means, I, I, I take the first sample, I discard the second one, I take the re I retain the third, I slash the fourth. So, every alternate sample I just chuck it off. Right. So, basically I get I get this, this is the output of a down sampler by 2, decimation by 2. If I decimate by 3, then I retain 1 in 3 samples. So, I think this idea of decimation has some uh, historical uh, perspective, um, I do not know how true this is, this is right or wrong, but uh, imagine if you had a crazy military journal, ge general and uh, who decides to retain one soldier uh, among 10 soldiers in the in, in the in the enemy in, in the enemy camp right, I mean he that is uh, 1 in 10 decimation. So, I think that is probably the idea of decimate 1 in 10, 1 in 10, one in ten heads is, 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 is kept right. So, it is basically you are slashing the, the rate, the number of people you are just you are getting, get, getting them out right and probably here is the same thing with sampling that means, you retain 1 in uh, 10 samples, but of course, in we want to be very general for down sample by m that means, we retain 1 out of m, m samples. Okay. So, similar to the decimator, we have another important block which is an L fold expander and let us see what this expander does, it is also called up sampler. So, we have x of n as our input, we want to upsample this by a factor of L and let us say we get this signal y e of n, e standing for the expand, uh, expander and like the decimator we can we can go about with a relationship between y e of n and x of n and y suffix e of n is x of n upon l if n is an integer multiple of l and this is 0 otherwise. So, let us see what is happening with with the with the expansion process. Suppose I give you samples time index 0, 1, 2 and let us say the values are 1, 2 and 3. and it goes through an expansion by 2, 
what we do is the following. So, we retain 1 at the next time step I have a 0 because it is 0 otherwise then I retain 2 0 otherwise retain 3 0 otherwise. and this happens which means I am inserting these zeros at these points at alternating at uh, uh, alternating uh, points right I mean this is because it is upsampling by 2 and my rate has now sort of doubled ok. Now you may ask these questions as I am lecturing you know I mean there is no information that you are really conveying right I mean you just have the same information here except that you have doubled and you have placed these zeros. But usually these operations of expansion or down sample down sam and or down, down sampling or up sampling they have some filtering operations as well. So, once you up sample you can imagine I need to have some interpolation filters to fill in these samples fill in these zeros right. What sort of interpolating filters would I use and can I get you know reconstruction which is uh, perfect and these type of questions uh, you know these are things which we will discuss through the through the succeeding uh, modules in this uh, uh, in this uh, succeeding lectures in this module on multi rate signal processing because this is basically the idea right. How can we construct filter banks etcetera basically I have a signal digital signal I just pass them through some analysis filters I reduce the sampling rate then at that point I am doing some transmission with quantization or quant quantization and transmission right and then at the receiving side I basically up sample to restore my sampling rate back and then I have to have because up sampling itself this process does not let you uh, get the samples that you want and then you should have some interpolation filters. So, this is sort of the sketch of the idea what we need right, but we studied two basic operations on a on decimators and expanders and we want to basically go delve a little more deeper into these uh, these ideas. But here I think I would like to sort of give you a simple exercise for thought not so difficult verify that decimators and expanders or linear but time varying is very important they are not LTI but it is it, 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 this is an LTV operation they are LTV systems. Okay. It is not too difficult to verify this and you, you could do that 